Good evening, everyone, and welcome to October's mid run install. 1910.2 is the new optional, and I currently have 19.92 installed and ran some tests. So let's go ahead and look at the back to back of what was the original of the 19.10.1 to refresh versus. One thing I wanted to point out is you can see right there the Port Royale, which should not technically be there but i just swapped my cards between my 2080 ti and sometimes i need to do bench tests on my intel so that's why it's installed here but it says your hardware may not be compatible but it's fun to think that the software may be soon but let's go ahead and look at our benchmarks what i currently have posted right there as you can see one through five are the scores that i have for 19 two versus the last standard optional which is the 1910.1 now having the two being the new version of it in this installment of october but you can see the direct x11 where the fire strike tests are pretty much almost dominating with the optional and then you can see the time span and the time span extreme depending on for an 1080p where it does tank it like by a little bit versus the actual extreme which it kind of like overcomes it a little bit so it actually utilizes the 4k a little bit better in the optional um so those are kind of like two things to look at directly if you're going into that and, and no port right out but let's go ahead and dive into the patch notes and we'll get the install underway as well now if you're new to the whole install thing just go ahead and hit the update Go ahead and if you want to you just see what currently is installed and hit the express for me. I just did a clean install so I really don't want to change anything. I just really want to have it really fast. Sometimes you can have some HDMI C for, like, transfer issues. Uh, but let's go ahead and dive into the patch notes as I get all this other computer stuff sorted and hit yes I would like to install. Let's go ahead and crack open the new optional release notes. So let's go ahead and talk stats. We're looking at Call of Duty Modern Warfare with the Ultra presets on the Radeon RX 5700 XT achieving up to 18% better performance when it comes down to Call of Duty Modern Warfare with Radeon Adrenaline software with this new adrenaline in introduction of the 1910.2 so if this is true versus the old standard versus the old optional and you are achieving that drop a comment i haven't gotten this card yet but i'm very curious that is very big uh, presets especially for a fast-paced game like that and then outer worlds which is a one that's very well uh, interests me is the very high preset in the radeon 5700 xt achieving eight percent in the better performance for as far as that going towards the other os now you can see early access now for a game that you can very quickly get into or as far as the drivers and having that being there so let's go ahead and stroll down to the fixed and known issues launching league of legends may cause the display to remain blank for a few seconds radeon chill may create an incorrect registration entering an enabled and or disabled Borderlands 3 may experience an angle application hangup after running the in-game benchmark or changing resolutions. The flicker may be experienced when and while playing media in movies and TV applications when using some of the display connected via USB Type-C. When you see the situation of where we have in the Radeon and the Vega cards and the 5700 series graphics card, you may experience a thread stuck crash in the TDR when there is a high GPU load active. So you may experience these situations that kind of suck, but let's go ahead and get down to the known issues before diving down below into the important notes. Now, the Outer Worlds may experience a character model being rendered incorrectly on the inventory screen. As far as the 5700 and its RX series of graphics production, you may experience a shutter in the game of 1080p at lower game settings. 
Uh, performing a metric overlay may cause a shutter in the screen and flashing the applications, and the 5700 may have a point of experience in display loss when resuming from sleep or hibernation when multiple screens are connected. Toggling HDR may cause a system instability during games when the Radeon Relive and in enabled it kind of seems like they've kind of figured some cool stuff out as well as the situation of the stutter of the experience when radeon and the free syncs is enabled at 240 hertz the refresh rate in the 5700 cards in the production so they just know that it isn't really always right up to where it's supposed to be but it's close and then you get down to the amd radeon 7 my card may experience elevated memory clock at idle on desktop well what's new it's always been there but Besides that, the important for these far as the mobile processors in the Vega, you can click right there and you can find more footnotes besides that and their mobile processing points. But looking at what we look into the portion of the testing of what they had on the 24th of today, you can look at that there was a i9-99K CPU at 3. gigahertz. Um, so that's very interesting that they are benchmarking their own stuff on a 99k with all the technology that AMD has. They they are utilizing that at like such a clock uh, such a clock speed. That makes me wonder like what's the that golden egg that Intel cooked up right there that even AMD is like oh that's pretty cool. So. Anyways, um, as you can see that they ran it in like Windows and you can go down to it where they've kind of gotten the scores from going into the uplifts. Um, so besides that portion of it, let's go ahead and get some uh, benchmark tests after we install. And one thing to point out before going there is that the Radeon software conveniently can be linked down below in the description that you can select right there. But let's get to some really cool installation and benchmarks. So we run the A-B test directly as just what the standard is, manually reset to the bare bone default, default. That way everything is just run direct. So let's go ahead and see what happens when we run some scores against each other. And then we can see the comparison of what is already there versus what is. As we can see, we're already starting our test directly inside of there as it ends one and boots in the other. The reason why I have the TR4 pug pulled in directly over here is the, one of the joyful points of where we're getting into November being next month being very close as we're getting close to the new 3950X and then the new predecessor of the 24 core Threadripper that's going to be entering the market for as far as the scene of AMD with their boasting of about 400% in the server market directly kind of taking over where Intel is price per where computing power is with the rough full point not where it's meeting it by 400% but, but the margin of functionality of finance is factored directly inside of there. Now one of the cool things that you can see with them moving directly forward Looking at the excitement of where our score is right there, and I'll pull up the direct portion of that, but looking also where the on-track portions of 2017 where Zen versus in its introduction with the Threadripper going towards forward now and Zen 2 in its production of where we're going to be seeing in about roughly about a month and some excitement of where the lineup is going to be going and to that where the 7 NMM plus of where we will get towards the 2020 bridging gap before we get into the reduction of uh, Zen 4 and 5 which is our 5 nanometer and 3 nanometer which is going to be insanely cool as they edge the uh, points but let's go look at our um, benchmarks toe to toe test 7 and 4 which are the influence of 19.10.2 which is 7 which is at 20 27 8 that's a lot versus the 20 2005 that the physical portion of the 19.9.2 has. So you can see the, the reduction inside of this, but check this out, I mean, it's worse. So looking at that situation where you have 22, not, I'd hope 22,000 would be great, but 20,205 versus the 20,151. So you can see that it's almost dropped 120 points from the first introductionable portion of like updates versus where the 19.10.2 pushes really good frame rates it seems like on the 1080p portion of the DirectX 11 through going through like kind of benchmark portions so depending on like how you're utilizing that that might help like in functionality let's go ahead and run some more tests 
To further the jump into the holidays of the future for 2020, as you can see the roadmap ends as well as where there is, you can see that you're also looking at the PlayStation 5, which is also a redirect release of their technology too, for AMD going crossing over, filling the portion of Scarlet and Lockhart, as well as the two systems that will be followed with for as far as Sony in their holiday release. Now coming down to the standpoints of where we're going to get into more information, Jim Ryan basically confesses his nerdly heart out to how much he loves the system and how they basically directly pulled it up with the inside the Wired magazine in an update. But they also had the portion of new blockbusters that he's currently wanting to thank the community of people that have been playing that that newer portions are ahead for as far as The Last of Us 2, Death Stranding, and other great titles that are going to be coming there. So let's go ahead and look at our benchmarks now that we finish that test for the Fire Strike Extreme. So the lineup again is 7 and 4, and looking at that situation, you don't notice that big of a deal. Because you're like, eh, that could be instability between tests and whatnot, that's merely only about 30 points. That's not really that big of a deal until you look again. With bearing in mind that the optimal FPS driver for DirectX 11 seeming like games in the 1080p ringer would be roughly within that situation of trying to go into the overclocked at 4k, you start seeing that it fatigues inside of this newer update of Binoctial. So it might be kind of cool for more of like the COD players and other people that were looking for those boosts in those certain games, like maybe like Outer Worlds and other games um that maybe it might benefit from or certain cards that it might benefit from but looking at this it seems like i see a slow decline as you look inside of there versus like the new standard being okay stable looking at the new one it's like very underclocked but this could be maybe good for some people that are experiencing some issues but let's go ahead and run some more tests and pretty much the same trend continues down as you get into the ultra just minutely noticed as you go from 20 to 18 down to the situation of where you're starting to see the fatigue of losing almost like 40 points just from the last portion so you can kind of see what's there uh for maybe hopefully stability and you know if this does cause any fps drops definitely leave a comment down below i'd like to hear what the community has let me know what graphics cards you're rocking and or CPU. It would be really cool to know the tech that everyone in the community that's watching is working with. But let's go ahead and run some time spies and get into some other tech news. Looking at our scores, now we have right around 8,065. And let's see what the comparisons are versus the 19.92 and the 19.10.1. Looking at the scores as we come out into the random point, point five being the 19. 10.1 starting off going down to the portion of where we have the 19.9.2 which is surprisingly pretty healthy when it comes down to DirectX 11 and running in that point of time spy in the 1080p form um, now you can see that the new one it drops substantially so it's kind of interesting to see like this update it's probably not one that I would favor unless I was playing new generation games and wanting those boosts and they were able to adequately be able to do so but let's go ahead and taste the, the extreme test and see where we get from there looking where our test is going to start right here for as far as the extreme portion of time spy you can see that the roundabout portion of what we're going to be getting into in the future where amd is going to be pushing forward with their tr4 and tr8 as the hopefully more advanced memory um complex will come down to that situation uh, i'm more interested to see what's going to be coming towards the edge of 2020 because that's when like i would say that intel will be starting to come in within firing range of like their closer portion of i guess being a competitor again like 2021 will be like the showcase of them trying to push forward into that uh, but I, I feel like we'll start getting benchmarks and like things of like inklings of what they're working on around that time. Um, looking at like where AMD is, though, they're in very sturdy ground. Like they're really not doing too much. They're forcing Intel to go to hyper threading on like almost all their stuff. I5, I heard I3. It's going to basically turn a lot of these older chips like almost to the cheaper portions ever in order for them to kind of move a lot of stuff. And like it's going to be interesting. Intel might become pretty cheap in the near future. 
um, just for them to compete in that situation of just liquidating stuff and moving forward. If they're spending $3 billion in technology in order to compete against someone who's only spending, I think, like 300000 or something like that, or 300 million i think it was something substantially like very cheaper it was like wait what like how okay like it, i guess they just like said screw it send everyone and all the bright minds but i guess they kind of asked what they kind of need a little bit but looking at like the portions of whether our scores are going to end up at inside of the situation i'm more curious to see like where the portion of like the Gonzalo APU will be going towards and CPUs of what they're really trying to get in towards because you know it's like with PlayStation 5 being like on like where we started off where I was saying like wait a minute AMD is utilizing Intel and they're utilizing it at this clock frequency isn't that rather interesting considering the spec portions of what you're looking at for like Intel so it's like did they really just test it in order to make an AMD version of a gaming processor for like PlayStation and then PlayStation coupling that with like their freaking like patented what they've been hinting for the industry is well the fastest console you'll see on the market now maybe that's just because they'll be really releasing it soon and I know there's going to be great consoles on both sides but these are going to be the portionable points of what we're going to be looking into the very future of what is next but what is next is scores will this be the saving score let's find out in this case the winner is 19.10.1 with coming in in almost every single category except for this one and it is literally by a point which could be a variant instead of the testing portion it goes to the old optional versus this new optional unless you are seeing increasements and you're needing increasements with an outer world and or other gaming um portions like that so i would say at this portion in time if you are new to the network you can always join like me and sonic and we're gonna go hit up green valley and go knock out some mechanical bees and go hit up mr eggman but all subscription humor aside, thank you so much for staying tuned and like seeing what the annual situation of what we will start to see inside of the Radeon patches. As you can see, as I was doing patch notes directly on, I think that was Borderlands? Yeah, yeah, that was Borderlands that I was like sewing up, as you can see in the background. And doing this project right here for as far as the portion of the 19.10.2, which is not too bad, but I'm seeing a more favorable portion of the 19.10.1. Now, 19.9.2 is not a bad standard. It's a good standard versus the other portions that we see, see for the 19.5.2 of what AMD has introduced in the Adrenaline software and we'll see. But I am very excited to see what they're going to involve this into. They may come into a new thing. It might be called something different. But I am waiting for the end of this month. And if you are new to the network, you should definitely subscribe to it because I will be dropping the news for that portion of when they give us possible software that will ray trace. So I will be actually, you know, trying to go port Royale crap for the first time ever on my on my AMD like you know situation because every single time I do it I go here and it goes like okay I think I can do this and then it just craps out it's not a good thing it's horrible my poor poor computer it thinks it can it's like the brave little toaster except for the brave little toaster actually did things but my it wants to do things it just does this and it's just like oh hey but anyways everyone you have a nice day and I'll see you guys and gals in the near future for more installments of technology and where things are going and what things are updating if and if things are actually conducively increasing things like are people that are playing like call of duty and like the portions of outer worlds experiencing zero fps increasements drop a comment if so your boy mac wants to know so keep it classy see you guys and gals in the near future